Hello, and welcome back to How to Create Impactful Legacy. It's Mary Lynn from Hard at Work, and uh, we, I bring on leaders who share their experiences uh, about creating a happier workplace uh, culture and environment. And uh, so we're just here to have a conversation. And today I have on the call with me is Christopher uh, Salem. That, I hope I pronounced that right. And um, so Chris, um, you thank you to the show and joining me today. So um, can you just maybe tell us how you got started and go from there? Well, absolutely. Well, you know, Marilyn, thanks for having me on the show. And it's a pleasure to be here. I, you know, I spent a majority of my career prior to do what I do now in sales. So, you know, when, in, when I was involved in sales, I had started working for companies and then eventually representing companies. And through that process, I really got to know not only myself, but understand other people. Mm -hmm. And I was always fascinated with understanding people, how people communicate, how they behave, how they interact and connect, how they do business mm -hmm. and so forth. And as a, a seasoned senior sales professional, leading sales teams and also selling myself, I had to really understand, I had to learn how to relate and understand people. And as a result of that, as I migrated into you know, the second phase of my career as an executive coach, I really took that, that understanding of people and the interest in developing people and bringing that to corporations and how they can build interdependent work environments, leveraging people's strengths, offsetting their weaknesses, leading by example through transparency and using active listening and the ability to understand one another, not only their roles, but how they communicate specifically to improve their operations, whether that was within their specific business unit, cross uh, multiple business units, or the entire organization. And I'm a firm believer that when you build interdependency into the workplace, and, imp and improve communication where it's specific, it's understood by everyone, and you do this leading by example, it just leads to more productivity, efficiency, and of course, profitability, and also raises retention in the workplace, keeping skilled employees that are necessary to grow the business. So that's something that, again, where I was and where I am today and why I continue to do why I do what I do. Yeah. It's uh, always so interesting, isn't it, how we um, lead from one thing to where we actually really want to be at, right? It's, uh, it's always interesting. I always learned that about sales, too. I started out in sales, and it was always interesting to see how people dressed, what they said, and, you know, all that stuff, like you were saying. And, and uh, you get to pick up on that and say, okay, cool, okay. No, okay. <laughs> you know, you just learn so much when you're in sales. <laughs> Absolutely. As, as you were, have uh, expressed already. So, um, so with this um, interview uh, process or show thing, I, what I like to do is more like find out some of the challenges that you find that your clients have and maybe some of the bigger problems they have and how you may be able to help them solve that. So maybe you could kind of go into some of that kind of stuff. Sure, absolutely. Well, uh, you know, in addition to working with companies holistically overall, I do work with individuals too. And, mm -hmm. and one of the areas that I get involved in is helping them to overcome limited beliefs so they can begin to see how those patterns that they, how they communicate, how they behave, how they interact with people, how they make decisions or take action all are a byproduct of those limited beliefs mm -hmm. or limitless beliefs. So when I'm looking at companies, I, you know, I begin to kind of look at the people. Every person's going to be different. It's not like, okay, you fit into this category. I know right. a lot of organizations like DISC and DISC is great, but it's not going to be really specific. It's just going to give you an idea. Mm -hmm. So the key is, is to really get an understanding of each person. Everyone ha you know, come, has, different beliefs come from core values mm -hmm. and are they in alignment in some way with others in, in the organization overall? What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? You know, if there are limited beliefs, again, you're not, I'm not playing the role of a psychologist, but letting right. them know that, that if, when they're there, they could be dictating what they're doing, why they're doing it, 
or where they're coming up short individually and how that's impacting the rest of the people in their organization. So especially when you have organizations that are codependent in terms of their behavior, the communication versus interdependence. So the key is it, it's a lot of work. And mm -hmm. the challenges I face that a lot of organizations understand this, but they're like, uh, that's too deep. It's too much. It's going to take too long. And we want results tomorrow. Now, right. with a lot of the things that I do, can I, can I still make a difference? Still kind of getting, you know, you know, making improvements, still managing the problem? Absolutely. And companies love that. Mm -hmm. But if we're really going to be really the most effective and efficient long-term and make it into a sustainable model. Right. It's best to solve the problem at the root cause of it and then develop the solution. So is that a process? Yes. Does it take longer? Yes. But for every hundred organizations that are out there, there may be one that understands that to that level and is willing to commit to that process, but yet see, sees the fruits of those efforts long-term of where it's going to take them. So yeah. that's kind of much the challenge that I usually face. It's a timing thing or they're, they're not looking to go too granular down to that level. They just kind of want to keep it at a surface level. Right. Right. And so what do you do then, you know, if you, how do you get your clients to go look at their limiting beliefs? What do you do? Do you have a process or how do you walk them through? Yeah. That? It, it, so basically what we do is we, you know, we try to look at is, is the company core values in some way do what they adopt a growth mindset philosophy. A growth mindset means is that we recognize individually and as a company, are we coming out of our comfort zones to do different things that are not only good for us individually, but for the, for other people in the organization? Are mm -hmm. we willing to take risks? Are we willing to be, uh, to kind of not have a box and just think freely to come up with new ideas and innovations that will transform and disrupt the, the, the industries that we serve. Mm -hmm. So if they buy into that, then it's more or less, again, creating the awareness with people about this and mm -hmm. then leaving it up to them to decide if this is something they want to investigate on their own, you know, mm -hmm. whether if they do it themselves or if they do it through the help of, of a, you know, somebody that's certified and, uh, has experience in this area, someone like myself that does this, and then just work with these individuals as a whole, more on a surface level to create the awareness, provide some different ways to make certain shifts in their behavior and how they communicate, how they lead by example to make those changes. And while companies do do that and they do see the results, I always tell them that to make this sustainable, that this has to you know, be consistent over time, right? You know, six months, a year, because it could take a year, maybe six months to a year before these new habits and disciplines and how people communicate differently got to be done over and over before it becomes consistent. So there's a lot of accountability. And if companies see, you know, the efforts of that working, then it's up to them to decide if they really want to go deeper and address it at an individual level. And of course, depending upon the size of the organization. That could be a daunting task in a process, but it is doable. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. I see that a lot when I do my work is that, you know, people just have some great insights and they go, wow, and it just doesn't take long at all, right? But you have to be willing to commit and stick with it, you know, and keep going absolutely. with it, right? Like you say, over the long term, you know, as well. Yeah, because other things do come up, right? I just call them beliefs. They're not really limited because... Positive beliefs could be limited too. <laughs> sure. Well, it's like you're, you're, it's like you, you, you might think you're only capable of doing this to this level. Yeah. While somebody is saying, I can do it at this level. Again, you know, it's, it's your confidence level. It's your level of self-esteem. It's all, it's all correlated with your, 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 whether if you're operating from a fixed or a growth mindset, fixed being limited beliefs, growth yeah. mindset coming from limitless beliefs. Yeah, yeah. There's different, so many different levels of belief systems that we have, and which ones are a hindrance, which ones are, well, it's good to fix, but you could do that later, but you know, kind of thing. So I totally, I totally get where you're coming from on that. So uh, some of the things is that, can you share a story and maybe um, of a client that you worked with that was very successful and you were able to help them to further grow, but they, they were already doing. Yep. 
Yeah, I mean, well, I've had uh, several individual clients, but I'll, I'll use, since we're using companies, I'll just, I'll, I'll well, use Well, you know, whatever, whatever one you want to use, that's fine with me. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'll use yeah. a company. As a matter of fact, I, I'll use a recent example, uh, again, without naming the company, just to yeah. you know, keep everything confidential. But I had yeah. an organization I worked with earlier this year in January and February, where we worked with their senior and middle management. We're talking about a company about the size of roughly around you know, 700 people. Mm -hmm. And uh, so not a big organization, but not a small organization by any right. means. And they, they manufacture different types of uh, products that you would find, like like health aid products that you'd find in a pharmacy, kind of like okay. white label products. Okay. And, and again, very old fashioned in a way, you know, traditional leadership, kind of old school, which, mm -hmm. you know, at the time was, you know, that's the way, way things were. And so as a result of this organization, you had a lot of people that were you know, baby boomers, then you had Gen Xers, you had, uh, you know, you had, so you had millennials, and then even an influx of some Gen Zers. So again, I don't like to categorize things, but, but nonetheless, because of that diversity, you, right. obviously there's going to be different ways how people communicate and how they interpret things, how they look at things, what are their values and principles. Mm -hmm. And when you have a, a diverse group like that, even with a small, even only with 700 some people, there's going to be conflict. And obviously right. there was in the communication. So as a result of that, over about an eight week period, we were able to work effectively on improving their communication skills, understanding themselves, understanding mm -hmm. each other, knowing each other's roles. So even though you might say, well, I know what he or she does, I know their title, yeah. but that doesn't necessarily mean you really understand their role. Right. And so we got very clear on their roles. We got clear on their functions, their duties, mm -hmm. and learning how to communicate where we, we relate and listen to understand versus respond. And we did, you know, we were talking about assertive communication, active listening, uh, leading by example, just to keep it short, but I won't go too granular on it. Yeah. But nonetheless, it all led to major improvements overall with the communication, not, not only amongst each other from department to department, but also even more importantly with their own staffs that worked underneath them where they saw an improvement in efficiency. And again, this was even towards the tail end of, of, of uh, March here, not too long ago, mm -hmm. but obviously now with uh, the, the pandemic, I don't know yeah. what, what's going on here with the second half, but, but I got, I got a lot of great kudos from the, uh, not only the CEO and founder, but also from his son, who is now the president and the CEO of the organization, specifying what, what a, I mean, in a short period of time, what a turnaround they saw and how people yeah. were relating and understanding and getting things more done in a more and being more efficient in their process. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's always the breakdown of communication that's the biggest angst, right? and helping them yeah. understand that and communicate more effectively is always always a challenge right even between individuals like you and yeah, i could oh, have a misunderstanding right and we have to figure out how we're going to resolve that to so that we can move forward so um yeah with the company i that's that's a good good group of people to work with and yeah help them see all about that. uh it was a total of about 35 people overall with these would be like uh, senior managers and some high level, like uh, you know, in the middle management areas for each right. of the different departments in the company. Yeah. Yeah. The so big leaders. We, the we big didn't leaders. get some of the lower end managers, but definitely the senior and middle, like, like the upper end of the middle area, like yeah. director level. Yeah. 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 And so do you think you're going to go back in and work on, help them with the lower level people? Yeah, we're looking at probably at this point now with the pandemic where, you know, things might have, but definitely it could be at the end of this year or at the very least at the beginning of early next year that we'll come back in. And I've done something similar like this with other companies and had yeah. great success mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. Again, can we get, can we go deeper? Can we get more granular? Absolutely for longer term results. But again, that would take some time. It would, it would almost be like I'm 
you know, I'd have to be part of the company for a little while. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's okay. You could just not as, an employee, not as an employee, but, but as a, <laughs> somebody that they, hey, they, they, they see me quite often. They'd be like, Hey, Chris, do you work here? No. <laughs> Oh, no, you could just jump in and be their communications director. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, helping them communicate more effectively. You got a problem? Come see me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so those are, those. that's a great success story. So um, is there a situation or um, a company or person that you worked with that uh, wasn't so successful? And how? what was the outcome of that? Yeah, I mean, I've had, uh, I work with a lot of individuals and for every, I would say 10 people, there's going to be a couple that just, for whatever reason, it doesn't work out. Right. And it's not because anything that I didn't do, I mean, again, cause I always try to assess to make sure there's an alignment up front that can right. I relate to this person? Can they relate to me? And this is going to be a good working relationship for me to really add value and help them. Mm -hmm. But it's just a matter of if they're doing the process or not. And some people, you know, said they were going to do the, you know, go do everything that was necessary to do. And then they just don't yeah. for whatever reason. Yeah. And anything that I do in my coaching is requires consistency day to day to do certain things that are going to help them get out of the problem and into the solution. And if that's not being done, then it's like with anything, if you put, yeah you know, a certain amount of time into something, you're just going to get a certain amount of, of output. You mm -hmm. know, if you put a lot of you know, time into something, you're going to get a lot of, of, a lot of output, whatever that may be. So everything is just a, a reflection of what you put into it. So because I, I, I have a process that I use, if that mm -hmm. process is being utilized or being done consistently, then it, it, you're not going to see those results to the level that you, you anticipate. And I, I, I'm a firm believer. I don't operate from expectation. It's not even a part of my vocabulary. I, I operate from a process. I, I, I control what I can. I let go of what I can't. I work the process and let my re the results I seek be a byproduct of that. Right. There are still some people that, while they understand that logically, they're still caught up in fixed mindset thinking, and they have expectations. Right. And they live their life out of expectations. So they're tied to results but there's no commitment in the moment in the process. They're just kind of like winging it or hoping and wishing. And, and obviously that doesn't lead to permanent results. So mm -hmm. those are the things that sometimes that there could be a struggle um, and where if that happens. And so a lot of times I, at that point, I might let somebody go and just mm -hmm. say, hey, listen, don't stop spending your money. It's not, wait till you're ready. And when you're ready, we'll talk. And, and again, I don't want to waste your time as well. I, I, my goal is to see you successful, but right. nobody can do it for you. It's either right. you're going to do it or that's it. Nobody else. Nobody can do it for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so true. You know, because it's all about us anyway, right? Exactly. You, and you, we can have guides or people direct us, but if we're not taking the steps, nothing is going to yep. work, right? So as we both yeah, know exactly. that. <laughs> So tell us a little bit more about the type of clients you like to work with and, you know, and just go ahead and promote yourself. <laughs> well, I, I really enjoy with companies, companies that are innovative, uh, are creative, uh, really understand on some level what their core values are and really mm -hmm. put people first. Those are the organizations that I feel are more open-minded to really investigate different ways to be more efficient, productive, and profitable. They tend to be more the long-term thinkers than short-term, even if they're a publicly traded company where, you know, shareholders are like every, you know, every day or every, every quarter, Hey, are we here? Are we here? Are we here? And then with individuals, again, those people that are really, you know, they're open, they're, they're, they're ready to embrace. They're ready to learn. They're ready to mm -hmm. apply, you know, a process and knowledge that can change the quality of their lives and business forever and doing things that maybe they haven't done before that will make them better at what they do and understanding why they do what they do and to be mm -hmm. a greater uh, impact for others through their example. So those are the people that, are, you know, that can really benefit from like the services that I provide. Right. Uh, the people that are, that are looking for somebody to hold their hand all the time. And, you know, and I work with a lot of codependent people. That's why they come to me, but, but yet, right. 
but I'm not feeding them. They're not looking for me to please and enable them. And if, and if they're open for me to lead from a place of empathy and kindness, which you do, yeah. you know, then they're more likely to have success. If they want that somebody to keep holding their hand and listening and compl- their, to their complaining, that would not be a fit for me. Yeah. 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 yeah I know somebody else would say, you know, if you want honest feedback, we can work together. But if you don't want to hear it, then we're not going to be a fit. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know, she just tells them right up front. And I think I appreciate that of her so much because, you know, then you know and stand, you know where you stand and you don't have to deal with this uh, flip flop going on, right? Or like you were saying, the people that are codependent um, and they don't like to hear the truth up front, right? So it's very clear, very clear to know, understand who you want to serve and why you want to serve them. So can you um, just maybe um, share to me uh, why, uh, in what way do you leave an impactful legacy on a business or a person? Well, I always say that, you know, again, this is a motto that I live by. and This is something I, I mention in all my trainings and consulting and one-on-ones or whatever the case may be mm-hmm. it's a it's a model mm-hmm. i like to call it it's a, a term i came up with called give without expectation mm-hmm. receive without resistance right so what that means is that we are constantly we can't give what we don't have right so so the first thing to do is we have to address ourselves to show up how can we show up to be our best not right. to be the best but to be our best and from that How can we empower people through our actions, our behavior, our communication to Mm -hmm. do the same for themselves, to find within themselves to do that? That's what creates an interdependent work environment. Right. And you're giving that value without expectation, knowing, though, that it comes back from wherever and you're able to receive without resistance. So, So in essence, those are the things that that I like to really leave a legacy for people to know that in this world, that anything that you wish and desire for, as long as it's mm-hmm. realistic, it's attainable, yeah. Yeah. but it's a, it's a two way street. You have to do your part in mm-hmm. order for the things that you can't control, call that the universe, call that your faith, your higher power, whatever you want to call it to trust, to do its part. I call it the process. And, right. when, and, and when you do that, you're, everything will work out and then and, and you're more likely now to reach those goals, those results that you seek by that. So that's the legacy I want to leave is to leave that, that whole philosophy and the process to go about doing it mm-hmm. and just myself living this and being like this in, you know, when I'm at home, when I'm out in public or I'm, where I'm at a company setting, doing mm-hmm. a training. Just wherever I am, that I'm being transparent about all of this, twenty four seven, and it's just, right. that's the legacy I want to leave for people how to lead their their lives in business moving forward. Right, right. It's a good philosophy. So, um, can you uh, maybe just give us a couple of tips, or if somebody wants to uh, need some help, but they just need maybe a couple of tips to get started. So, do you have any ideas or things yeah. that you're willing to share for that? Yeah, I would say that, and you know, just to kind of do take a you know an assessment of where you are at, both mm-hmm. personally and in your career or business. You know, be honest with yourself. Don't try to project that you like to be somewhere, but you're really not. It's just <laughs> to be aware of where you are yeah. and to say that it's okay where I'm at right now. But it, but knowing that you can make improvements by committing to a process. So the key for me right now is to to assess, be aware of where you are accept where you are, but make a commitment to move forward into a solution or a process that will take you to where you want to go. Now, you may not know what that is. Right. And I don't want to define what that will be for you. I can define it how, how I do it and how I help my clients. But it, again, you might be working with someone else or wherever you're, whatever you're going to do. So finding what that is going to be and knowing that you don't have to have all the answers today. Right. Take what you know trust the process each day each week each month that that intelligence or information will reveal itself 
think of it like a puzzle that each week or each day, week, month, quarter, mm -hmm. whatever, that that puzzle piece, will, another piece will come to connect the pieces to complete your puzzle. Right. That kind of like, you know, if I, if I use that as an analogy that I like to get across to people. Yeah. Yeah. It's always a, a piece, but there's always a piece of puzzle that's missing, but sometimes yeah. like you were saying, we don't know what it is. And then yeah, all of a so sudden somebody will say something. And, and commitment to move forward. And then yeah. another thing too, I forgot to forgive yourself of any past mistakes and right. to forgive the source to your own limited beliefs. So what, I, we didn't discuss right. that, but yeah, the, the source to my limited beliefs be other than myself was my father. And right. I had to forgive him because I had this, this disconnect. Right. And you know, it affected my, my development. It affected my level of self-esteem and confidence. I had to make amends with that and to forgive him and myself, more importantly, right. to get into the solution, to operate with better habits and disciplines, and to raise my level of confidence in everything that I do. Right, right. That's so, so well said, Christopher. Thank you for that. And um, so if somebody wanted to reach uh, out to you and maybe have you talk with them or speak to them, how would they do that? Well, I mean, the best place, I mean, LinkedIn is always great at Christopher Salem. Uh, you could check out my website at www.christophersalem, one word, C-H-R-I-S-T-O-P-H-E-R-S-A-L-E-M.com. That's my uh, business executive coaching and speaker website. Mm -hmm. And then um, I also get it. I also have a nonprofit called Empowered Fathers in Action called EFA Movement. That's at uh, www.efamovement, one word, dot org. Uh, or LinkedIn. You can reach yeah. out there or uh, email at chris at christophersalem.com. Yeah, we forgot to talk about that. Do you want to say a word about your foundation? Sure. Yeah, the foundation, more or less, Marilyn, takes the same principles that I teach my individual clients and in, in how I create awareness also. To right. organizations looking to adopt a growth mindset in their uh, as a foundation of their core values, it's it's really helping um, families to create interdependent family structures built upon effective communication and leading by example. So it, you know addressing how parents can address their own limited beliefs so right. that they can be better examples through their behavior and communication because children observe versus you know learn from what they've been told. It's what they right. observe. And this way will help them to, you know, raise their level of self-confidence and self-esteem as they grow older and, and become adults. So they don't repeat those uh, codependent or dysfunctional uh, behaviors with their future family. So they become better leaders in their homes, communities, and their businesses. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I thought it was uh, very cool when I read that on link your LinkedIn profile. <laughs> so anyway, okay. Well, thank you for joining us today. Um, and uh, I look forward to um, watching you again. And also, um, you will have a, anybody wants to get a hold of you, you'll be listed on podcast.hardatworkonline.org and um, also on Anchor. So we'll have a video clip on there and uh, an audio, which, which is on Anchor, and it's on Impactful Legacy. So thank you for joining me today, Christopher. So, so appreciate your time. I know you're a busy man. And so... I'll let you go back to work. <laughs> Enough of <laughs> <laughs> Never a dull moment. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. Okay, well, you take care and uh, always be kind. That's my signature uh, tagline, always be kind. So thank you and have a great weekend and um, much success to you, Christopher. Thank you. Same to you, Marilyn. Thank you for all you do with you and your show. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. Okay, bye-bye. Bye.